Welcome to the YouTube channel of Science is Confusing. In this video, we will be talking about Kepler mission. But before that, I, Ananya Biswas, will be talking about telescopes. Telescope is basically an optical instrument which uses lenses, curved mirrors, or a combination of both to observe the distant bodies using their emission, absorption, and reflection of electromagnetic radiation. There are three types of telescopes, refractors which use lenses, reflectors which use mirrors, and catadioptrics or compound scopes which use both lenses and mirrors. In case you hear about other specific terms for telescopes such as Dobsonian or smith cassegrain telescope, these are all variants of the basic three types of telescopes such as the Dobsonian telescope is a type of reflector whereas the smith cassegrain is a type of catadioptric. Refractors use lenses. Their length is longer in comparison to their size. The larger the lens is, the longer the optical tube needs to be so that it can bring the image into focus. Reflectors use mirrors which causes the light to be reflected at various angles inside the optical tube, thus increasing the overall light path. This causes reflectors to be shorter than refractors while having the same aperture because in case of reflectors, light does not need to flow in a straight line to travel the same distance. In catadioptrics, both lenses and mirrors are used together. Therefore, it is smaller and more portable than both refractors or reflectors of the same aperture. This is possible because the corrector plate holds the light path and the curved secondary mirror magnifies the light internally. Next, what we need to know is how a telescope works. Telescope, as said before, is a tool which is used to observe the faraway objects. It uses curved mirrors, lenses, to gather light and focus it. The first telescopes used pieces of curved clear glass called lenses to focus the light. But nowadays we use mirrors. Why? This is because mirrors are lighter and it is much easier to make perfectly smooth mirrors as compared to lenses. For lenses, bigger the lens, more light the telescope can gather and then that light is concentrated by the shape of the optics. In case of telescopes, we need to keep in mind that the optics needs to be perfect. The mirrors, the lenses, must be the exact correct shape to concentrate the light. There can't be any spots, scratches or any flaws in the mirrors or lenses. If they do have such problems, then the image gets warped or blurry. It's hard to make a perfect mirror, but it's even harder to make a perfect lens. As you can see in this diagram, the larger lens gathers the light. Then that light travels through the length of the optical tube, is focused, and then the smaller lens magnifies and focuses the light for our eyes. I, Arunima Basu, would like to speak mainly about the Kepler mission, basically an overview of the mission. The Kepler mission is NASA's first mission capable of finding the Earth-sized and smaller planets around other stars using an orbiting space telescope. The Kepler Space Telescope has been monitoring 100,000 stars similar to our Sun since its launch in March 2009. The Kepler Space Telescope is named for the astronomer Johannes Kepler. The principal investigator was William J. Borocki. Kepler's primary mission is to find the Earth-sized exoplanets. The Kepler Space Telescope watches transits and measures the reduction in the star's light due to the planet transiting in front of its star. Kepler's sole scientific instrument is a photometer that continually monitored the brightness of approximately 1500,000 main sequence stars in a fixed field of view. These data are transmitted to Earth then analyzed to detect periodic dimming used by exoplanets that cross in front of their host star. Only planets whose orbits are edge on from Earth can be detected. During its over nine and a half years of service, Kepler observed 53,506 stars and detected 2,662 planets. Next, let us come to the Kepler science. NASA's Kepler mission revolutionized our scientific understanding of our place in the cosmos by discovering that planets outnumber the stars, small planets are common, planets are diverse, 
And interestingly, the solar systems are diverse too and also about the new insights revealed about the stars. Now let us see what is a transit. Most known exoplanets have been discovered using the transit method. A transit occurs when a planet passes between a star and its observer. Transits within our solar system can be observed from Earth when Venus or Mercury travels between us and the Sun. Transits reveal an exoplanet not because we directly see it from many light years away, but because the planet passing in front of its star ever so lightly dims its light. This dimming can be seen in light curves, graphs showing light reviewed over a period of time. When the exoplanet passes in front of the star, the light curve will show a dip in brightness. Transits can help determine a variety of different exoplanet characteristics. The size of the exoplanet's orbit can be calculated from how long it takes to orbit once and the size of the planet itself can be calculated based on how much the star's brightness is lowered. Lastly, I would like to talk about the Kepler's second mission that is K2. K2 uses the spacecraft built and launched for the Kepler mission which ended data collection in 2013. K2 is able to obtain precise positioning in three axes despite having only two reaction wheels while balancing the spacecraft against the solar pressure. In each year of operation, K2 observed over 40,000 targets spread over four fields of view. K2 observed in both the northern and the southern sky in and out of the plane of the galaxy and covered 10 times more sky than the original Kepler mission. K2 identified high-value exoplanets for follow-up and characterization, collecting photometric information on tens and thousands of stars in the local neighborhood and gathering information on stellar clusters, black holes, supernovae and variable galaxies. The original Kepler mission found that small planets are the most common type of planets in our galaxy and the K2 is the first exoplanet mission to be designed with that result in mind, surveying both nearby bright stars and m dwarfs, both of which offer significant advantages for future characterization. Here we can see the Kepler spacecraft operating as the K2 mission and roughly every 80 days the spacecraft will move to a new field of view aligned with the plane of the solar system. Thank you everyone, this was all about our Kepler mission and the Kepler telescope.